Come your feet inside outside one more time. yourself the pain is gone the pain is gone the lung is dissolved the ear can hear there is a miracle happening to someone's health seated outside and you can hear me say amen a louder amen Amen. god bless you first peter 4 from verse 12 we'll read 12 and 13 the bible says beloved so he's talking to children of god and if you're a child of god say amen. amen he said beloved think it not strange Consigning the fiery trials, which is to try you. So there are certain trials that are to try every beloved of God. He said, as though some strange thing had happened to you. So that when you go through trials, you go through a challenging moment. He's trying to give you notice beforehand that do not think that something strange has happened that should not happen to you as a believer. Then he said, but do what? Talk to me, do what? Rejoice. In the midst of the trying moment, in the midst of the challenges, in the midst of the sufferings, the afflictions, he said, rejoice. In as much as ye are what? Partakers of Christ's sufferings. An interesting statement. Partakers. I thought Christ suffered everything already. So why is he talking about being partakers now of Christ's suffering? Jesus died already. He has done everything that pertains to our salvation. But the Bible says, even though you are a beneficiary of that salvation, even though you are a partaker of the finished work of Christ, the Bible calls you first the beloved, and then he tried to prepare your mind for what the beloved can go through. Then he said, that you are also supposed to be partakers of the sufferings of Christ so that when his glory shall be revealed ye might be glad also with exceeding joy why because you will also be partakers of his glory say amen so that if you are partakers of his sufferings then you qualify to become partakers of his glory so that when you go through certain seasons of your life He said, do not count it strange. Do not think something um, unusual is happening to you. I know here and there, that's why we have miracle services. That's why we minister to the sick and all of that. Um, Here and there, um, there are still oppressions that happen. 
that are pioneered by demonic spirits and all forms of oppressions of darkness however but that certain things can happen to believers and it's not out of the awareness of the god you serve he's saying do not think something strange is happening when you go through this kind of sufferings in fact he called them the sufferings of christ and tonight that's my topic the sufferings of christ say amen second corinthians 4 verse 16 through 18 tonight's teaching might be a hard one to bite and chew but you are a mature believer and you are willing to learn say amen, amen. say amen, amen. <laughs> your amen should not reduce project the scripture second corinthians 4 it said for which cause we faint not he said but though our outward man perish so on account of the things that you are most likely to go through as a believer he said your outward man can perish your outward man can go through pain your outward man can go through frustration there can come a point in your life as a believer where you are literally discouraged you are literally frustrated i mean a lot of things around your life that are beyond human explanation you want to explain but you don't know how to explain because see when it has to do with applying every principle and doing everything you should do you have done all but at times it will still look like this thing is not it's not just it the bible says at that point the outward man meaning your physical being regulated by your five senses can perish meaning can be weary can be tired can be exhausted however he said yet the inward man is what is renewed day by day now this is why a believer can be going through so much yet when he comes out he smiles and when he smiles he can hold your hand and you ask him how are you doing he said glory to god all is fine he's not confessing because physically everything is fine he's confessing because the inward man is being renewed you are learning say amen. amen this is very important and this is now the difference between the confession of faith and the realities we go through faith is not stupidity faith is not trying to deny that something is there faith is simply believing what god has said over that situation do you understand what I just said? Faith does not mean you have lost your senses. Faith does not mean you can't see the fact. Faith does not mean you can't, you are not aware of what is happening. It simply means you are trying to superimpose the word of God over that challenge. That's what faith is. It is not foolishness. Because here and there, I've seen a lot of believers talk as though they don't have senses again. Why will you just assume or make it look like nothing is really happening when something is happening? keep the scripture so that your outward man can perish but that you have to ensure that the inward man is renewed not once a while day by day why because on daily basis there are things that will come to buffet your faith and make it look like what god has spoken over you is not true next verse now he makes an interesting statement he said for our light affliction our light affliction another word for light our little affliction he calls it little but there are times you go through it and you are the one that knows what you're going through is that it there are times you are crying alone look at the playlist of the preachers very powerful there are times you even look at god in the eyes and say i'm not doing it again and somehow because you have been transformed to a level somehow you come back to god again and say lord i made that statement because i was in pain forgive me you know i am flesh and blood i have returned back show me mercy you've done that before say amen let me hear your keyboard. I want to sing a song. Forgive me, O oh Lord. It's me again. Have disobeyed your word. Accept of your truth. I hope that's the lyrics. Remorseful, I stand. It's me again. That there are times you will finish is after you have said everything that was in your mind you will now come back remorseful and say lord you know i love you beyond everything that happened last night in my room while i was crying and talking i truly love you and there is nothing that can separate me from your love is that true yes it is not strange for me things like that to happen to a believer keep the scripture please 
So he said, our light affliction, he calls it light. Why? Because compared to what he has in stock for you, this is going to be what we'll examine next week. But tonight, let's examine this part of the affliction, which is for me, but for a moment that is not supposed to be forever. The affliction part is supposed to be for a moment. The Bible says, it worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory there is a glory at I mean at the end of the tunnel these afflictions are not supposed to kill you say amen. amen the process is not supposed to destroy you say amen. amen all of these things are happening and i can guarantee you that at the end of it it will always end in praise if it is god that is in the picture it will always end in praise now verse 18 for why we look not at the things which are seen because if you look at the things which are seen, you might be discouraged. But at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. I won't trade you for silver or gold. I won't trade you for riches untold you are you are my everything you are you are you are my everything. so the sufferings of Christ I might be using a lot of terms interchangeably whether the afflictions of the righteous or the trying of the saint the trials of the saint but in any case just know it's same thing i'm talking about and all of these things doesn't negate negate the realities or the 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 the, the realities of our new creation experience the bible tells us in second corinthians 2 and 14 maybe you project it quickly he talked about the triumph of a believer. I said, now thanks be to God, which always, not once a while, always caused us to triumph in Christ. Now, there shouldn't be anything called triumph if there was no time of affliction. Is that it? If there was no battle, if there was no fiery moment of I mean, trials, there is nothing to call triumph here. He said, and make it manifest the savour of his knowledge by us in every place that when you go through such moments there is a guarantee of triumph and this is what believers should leverage upon but that when a preacher tells you listen that as a believer you are not supposed to go through anything that gospel is not from god as a believer everything should be rosy and many times we have used this especially when making utter call and a lot of people have been born again and surprised at the end of that born again experience we tell them come to jesus he will fight every battle and of course we are not lying he will take away everything you are going through he will pay your rent he will do what again huh he will heal your infirmities he will do everything and we promise all kinds of things and we do not put a disclaimer that although god can do everything and he's going to eventually do everything but that also part of the package If we tell them that all of the package is the good part and everything they are going to come into the kingdom and be surprised like a lot of us here were surprised because many people gave their life to Christ we told them give your life to Christ as an arm robber as a prostitute and the Lord will meet all your needs according to his riches now the guy gives his life to Christ and say thank you Lord if the Lord can supply my needs according to his riches i think this is worth it and now he comes into the kingdom and finds that tell you while all the friends that will even support him say now that you are born again you are no longer part of us we are not willing to give you a dime and he comes into the kingdom and find that his rent has expired and he doesn't have the money to pay a guy that was living maybe in three bedroom flat or something now have to squat with someone and he started asking questions is this what you told me jesus can do because you never told me at the beginning of the journey that there can come a point where even my rent can be a problem then you who have been born again for long will smile and say welcome share you enjoyed when you were in the world come and test of the sufferings of jesus 
and a lot of us have a lot of things we need to know but we don't want to ask questions because we feel like if you ask questions you look like you are a rebel but is this is this really it where this thing supposed to be part of the package that you finish secondary school and you pray your life i've fasted for admission and for 10 years the admission have not come people that don't even love god are getting the admission and you are like lord what are you doing to me or someone who got married and then got married and stayed for five years 10 years without having an issue you might think it's easy until you are the one in the picture hallelujah no please leave it leave it allow them but don't worry you can offer it but keep it for them let them be blessed say amen i'll be fine you are still in church say amen so a lot of people have been in a fix confused because these things were not explained they were not aware of these things now they come in and they begin to experience all kinds of things and this is not again to negate our experiences in christ and the victories that have been made available to us and you see a lot of us who are men of god have not helped issues listen carefully because a lot of us who are men of god have hidden our scars many times i've heard men of god say things like i've never failed in my life you are lying sir there is no way you will tell me you have never failed in your life what's the deal? i mean you see if you are making a confession of faith let make us understand but to just come and say you've never failed in your life there was never a moment in my life where xyz happened you see I love to listen to the messages of these our fathers because when you listen to those ancient messages, you will know that what you are going through now is not strange. You see, when you arrive at glory, don't cover yourself and make it look like you didn't go through anything. Because the younger generation are learning something wrong. They just come and get, it is your experience of 45 years or 25 years you just come and share it and tell us nothing really happened i just it was a journey of faith and i just got it like that and then a young man come and say in the name of jesus i know the god i serve the god of my father xyz and then after confessing the god of my father and making declaration he still goes back home there is nothing to eat and he's wondering was there ever time in the life of this man that food was a problem if yes but it was not captured in the declaration and this is not to negate the declarations of faith. We do that here every month. In fact, every service. But that it is part of the package. There can come a time where a believer go through a fiery season of trials. It is not strange. I told you tonight might not be a normal one, but please just take it. Because many times when we go to church, the part we like is when the man of God just read one scripture and the Lord blessed Abraham and then told him, I'm your exceeding great reward. And I will look at somebody and say, your reward has come. And everybody jumps up and shouts, Amen. Well, I should also let you know that before the reward came, Abraham was almost dying. So that we don't just claim that part that suits us and our journey and forget that these men, the Bible says everything that was written in scripture were written for our learning. So that through the comfort of scriptures, you see it, that this thing should comfort you in your own journey to know that the things you are going through now are not necessarily strange. For no temptation has taken a man that is not common. So that whatever you are going through now, there is somebody somewhere that has gone through it. Is that true? When God lifts you, please show your scar to the next generation. Paul said, I bear in my body the marks. He didn't just arrive without. It was not a spiritual mark necessary. I'll soon show you in scripture. Some of them were physical marks of being beaten, brothers. Beaten by iron road. So it was not just the mark of Christ, maybe in his spirit. No, it, they were physical marks. You know, usually when you finally enter the palace, the glory of the palace can cover the scars, right? People will look at you and say, ah, you are looking nice, oh. And then they will not even believe that you went through any moment. And while they are shouting, it's only you and God that is saying, these people know where God picked me from. Let me show you a few scriptures. We have a lot for tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 4. But now, thus says the Lord, this is God speaking that created thee, O God, I mean, O Jacob, 
and he that formed you O Israel fear not for I have redeemed you so he's talking about redemption you can read I mean listen to my message on the benefits of redemption I redeemed you I have called you by name so I know your name I know everything you are going through next verse now he said but when thou passest through the waters I will come quickly and deliver you talk to me now when you go through the fire I will come quickly and quench the fire when thou passest through the waters I will be we will all be in that fire that water but we will pass through it together so my coming is not to rescue you from that flood necessarily I will come and be with you and we will still go through it and when you go through so that it will not overflow you and when you go through the fire he said thou shall not be burnt he didn't say I will deliver you he said you will not be burnt neither shall the flame but you will go through it at least feel the heat next verse for I am the Lord thy God the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior, I get even easy for thy ransom, and Ethiopia and Sheba for thee, but for this fire, I did other things, I could even kill others for you, but that when it has to do with your training, this fire, you might have to go through it. And this is the part we might not want to hear. Psalms 34, let me start from the Old Testament and come into the New Testament psalm 34 verse 19 because many times when you preach like this some folks that feel they have studied their bible will come and tell you are reading the old testament show us from the new testament i will soon show you many are the afflictions of sinners is that it many are the afflictions of wicked men many are the afflictions you are listening to me as if that's what the bible says many are the afflictions of who the righteous he didn't do anything wrong to deserve the affliction but the bible said many can be the afflictions of the righteous the guarantee is that the lord will do what deliver him from them all but the afflictions will come the pains will come the sufferings will come the afflictions will come and when we talk about affliction we don't mean maybe lack of money it can be somebody conspiring against you have you gone through conspiracy it can be someone in church you trust saying something wrong about you and he's so close to you people believe you try to explain yourself there's nothing you could say now you sit back and say no me oh this person I, I will never forgive the person and God is saying no this is what we call the sufferings of Christ forgiving the person and still loving the person means you are mature even though the pain is there these are the things we call the sufferings of christ it's not necessarily that you you don't have money and all of this is no the afflictions of the righteous second corinthians 1 and verse 4 second corinthians 1 and verse 4 who comforted us in our tribulation he didn't come to take you out of it but he gave you comfort in the midst of the tribulations that we might be able to comfort them which are in any trouble so by reason of your comfort and how you went through it you will comfort others by the comfort wherein we ourselves we are comforted of God we are reading through it for as the sufferings of Christ are bound in us this is the new testament brothers and sisters the same Paul we quote and say we are not supposed to xyz Paul is speaking now listen to him for as the sufferings of Christ are bound in us so our consolation also are bound by Christ for whether we be afflicted it is for your consolation and salvation meaning we went through a lot just to see you saved which is effectual in the enduring of the same suffering which are which we also suffer or whether we be comforted it is for your consolation and salvation then he said our hope of you is steadfast knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings so shall ye also be of his consolation for we will not brethren have you ignorant of our troubles meaning we won't hide the scars 
We won't try to come to you and pretend as though nothing is happening. We will not have the ignorance of our trouble. Which came to us in Asia. We went to Asia and went through hell. That we are pressed out of measure. Above strength. In so much that we despair even of life. It came to a point where living was miserable. It was painful. All on account of this journey. Our generation don't know this one. Our generation know it shall be well with you. Go and prosper. Go and do well. And you should know by now I'm not against prosperity. But you should, you two should know by now that before you enter that realm, God would have trained you. Is that it? Otherwise, why are you not yet there? With all the confession you've been confessing, why does it look like the journey is still getting tougher for some of people? Some of us. And some people are even at the verge of you are coming out of that struggle now. But you know what you went through. You see, when God lifts you, please help the next generation. Help them. Help them tell them the truth. Don't hide anything. Tell them the truth. First Peter 5 and verse 10. Maybe you don't understand Peter. You under, I mean, Paul, you understand Peter now. But the God of all graces, you know what that means? He has the ability to do everything. The God of all graces. Everything is in him. Who had called you unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. You will think the next line should be will settle you and bring you into one measure of grace and anointing. Look at the next line. After that you have what? It is the God of all grace that called you. He called you into his glory. But look at what happened next. He said after that you have suffered for a while. Some of us, that's where you are now. That's where your life is now. This suffered for a while. You have not gone to the next one yet. Because that's, that's the progression. After suffering for a while, what next happened? He will perfect you. After perfecting you, what happened? He will establish you. After establishing you, what happened? He strengthened you. After strengthening you, what happened? He will settle you. Some of us are still in the first one. After that, you have... suffered for a while and nobody told you that before the perfection before the establishment before the strength before the settlement there is a season so many times we come to church and sing those songs and we don't even know what we are saying but God is saying even if you don't know thank God for confessing it even if you slay me and God is nodding or still seem to delay me I will never let go. And God is saying, that's right. I will never let go. And God will touch the bone leading the son. They say, two more times. Then you now lift your hand. Even if you slay me. Or seem to delay me. I will never let go. I will never let go. The person will say, no, this song is really blessing me two more times. Then you will now stand from your seat. And is that not what you used to do? I used to look at you. You will now stand from where you are and lift your hands. Even if you slay me. And God is saying, I'm seeing the hands. A sign of total surrender. Because according to the calendar, you are still supposed to go through it for three years. Are you seeing it? So while you are confessing, God is saying, that's right. So I will truly give you the grace. You see, that's why there are prayers we pray about for, for many of us. What you need is not that God should bring you out of that journey. No. What you need is the grace to go through that journey. The grace. Who? Apostle, you mean even being righteous who will go through all of these things. Now, with these scriptures in mind, let me show you a few misconceptions that people, a lot of people have. About the sufferings of Christ. Number one, just put those scriptures at the back of your mind. And then have these things resolved. Now, number one, a lot of people believe that the coming of Jesus was a total escape from sufferings, trials and even process and all of that. They believe so. Meanwhile, the primary assignment was to deliver you from sin. 
not principles. Jesus came to deliver you from sin. He didn't come away with me to take away his principles and the truths of the kingdom. That's why the Bible said grace and truth came through Jesus. It was not just grace that came, truth also followed. So, now that I'm born again, I'm not supposed to go through these things. Because a lot of people now will say, I will backslide. I will go back to the world. In fact, people have even met me. One met me and said, before I gave my life to Christ, I was seeing money. What's suddenly happening? Apostle, do you really mean I should not do the things I was doing? Of course, you know the things you were doing. It was even a lady. How do I now live? How do I survive? Because someone had told her, the moment you get born again, everything. No. In fact, the day you got born again, that journey started. That was when the journey really began. That was when the affliction, the, 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 the process really began. Because Satan was not going to close his eyes and look at you and allow you just switch from one kingdom to another kingdom. And then there is no price to pay. So you are surprised that everything is not going rosy. It's a misconception. Number two, a lot of people believe most times that sufferings or afflictions are a proof that you have sinned against God. It's also not always true. That the reason I'm going through so much is because I did something wrong. No. The reason why I don't have a job yet. The reason people don't like me yet. The reason people keep backbiting me. The reason why things are not really working for me is because I sinned against God. I did something. Maybe Nemesis is catching up with me. Not always true. Not always true. I will soon show you from scriptures. The Bible called them righteous. But he said many are the affliction of the righteous. Not sinners. Not those who have done something wrong. So it might not just be that you have sinned against God. Satan bring all of those thoughts to keep you in guilt. A lot of people that love Jesus were burnt alive. Have you read that in Bible history? Not even just Bible history, even church history recently. A lot of people were killed. A lot of people were beaten. A lot of people went broke. The man Lazarus lived completely poor. I know there are many messages you can get from that. Lived and was li living and eating from someone's table till death. He was still righteous. A prophet died and he was in debt. It's in your Bible. He was still righteous. We teach other principles that helped. I mean, helps to just balance up so that believers don't end that way again however there is a season you might go through in between learning the principles and getting the result you have to understand that god himself can permit such seasons so it might not always be because you have sinned no so you might even sit down and check around let me even try to think is there something wrong i've done oh god that makes me go through all of this and after thinking you will find there is nothing really Number three, a lot of people feel that the sufferings of Christ are a reflection of your faith level. So they tell you you don't have faith. Build your faith. Because faith is now. Abby, how did the Bible put it in the book of Hebrews 11? Now faith is. Meaning if faith does not work now, it's not faith. Brother, the person preaching it, go and study his past and find how you got there. Find out. So that when you are doing declaration of faith, do it patiently and then waiting and applying every principle and waiting for the result to come at the right time. So keep applying the principles and don't kill yourself. Because a lot of people get discouraged and feel there is something wrong with me. And they keep asking questions from one end to the other. And you know that nothing is really wrong with you. Share the Bible tells us seed, time, and what? So in between the seed and the harvest, what do you have in between? Time. Time. And a lot of things happen between the seed and the harvest. Within that period of time, a lot of things happen. It might not be that you don't have faith. It could even be that God is trying to use your life to teach your generation a lesson. Please help you. It could be.
So while others were getting it, you did everything possible, it didn't work. While others were getting married, it didn't work for you at the time it should have. And while you are about to complain, the Lord will ask you, do you still love me? And you say, yes, Lord, I do. He said, hold your peace and follow me. Like Abraham, your father's house. Follow me to a land where I will show you. And Abraham doesn't even know where he's going, but he keeps following. At some point, he will stand and say, Lord, to where? And God will say, do you still believe I'm your God? Yes, follow me. And he keeps following. That's what is happening to a lot of us here. Some of us are seated down here with the way you love God as it is presently. It looks like you are very confused. Can I tell you? You don't even know where God is going with your life now. And it's part of the journey. I mean, if we give you a pen now and say, write down the blueprint of your life with how spiritual you are, it's still a guesswork. You don't even know it. And now you can feel like, so how about God? I pray, I fast. Why is my life like this? And God is still saying, do you love me? Yes, keep following me. But should I follow you in confusion? You just follow. You just follow. It's part of it. So you might, you might even meet friends and everybody is telling you, the Lord told me this, 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 this. And when it's your turn, you say, honestly speaking, I've not heard anything. And they're like, ah, ah. With all the prayers. For the ways of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. I might not have all the explanation, but the ways of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. You love the kingdom of God so much. You know that the money you are pursuing is not for yourself. But it looks like every attempt you take, God himself frustrates it. You joined MMM, it crashed because of you. You have joined several other investment platforms that crashed because of you. You. Because you have finished your calculation. You are like, if this happened and this happened, I mean... You were rich in your head. And God is saying, if I allow all of this to happen to you now, that a lot of things won't get correctly. So because of you alone, like Jonah in the ark, everything capsized. And you came out and said, Lord, help her. She would have allowed me just for one year to get the, the dividend. And God said, no way. I can lift you in one day when we are done with our class. I can bring you the rest in one day when we are done with our class. But before we finish, no, it will be an abortion of destiny. Something will happen that we might not be able to recover you back. You know, many times you feel you are ready. God is truly the one that knows whether you are ready or not. So by I am ready, I know myself. No way, that's not it. You don't know yourself. So it's not because you don't have faith. Is it not in your Bible? The Bible says some women received their dead back to life. Others did not receive their dead. Others truly went through that pain. Went through that. They went from one hole to another. Hiding in caves. And the Bible still at the end of their life said they had faith. So the one that had the immediate result. And the one that eventually had the result. After being stretched. The Bible put all of them together and said everything they went through equal what? faith so the fact that your own is working now does not mean those who are not having the result don't have faith watch the way you talk because that's what we do right now because it's working for one believer he just sit there and make it look like every other person is not doing anything you are still in church say amen and many times now number four we believe that when you are going through the sufferings of Christ, somebody from your village is after you. That's Africa for you. We always have villages. And we always trace everything back to those villages. It might not always be. Now you have done all the videos you know to do. You have destroyed all the pots in your village, destroyed all the trees and set them on fire. And you are sure God heard you. Every tree in your village is dead on account of your prayer. But that you have not still left that season. Is it not obvious enough to know 
that the hand of God might be involved in this thing. After throwing everything into the sea, they did everything and, and lost everything. Later they found that God was even the reason for all the things they were going to because Jonah was in there. So it might not be because of lack of faith. The man that translated the Bible, the New Testament, Williams Campbell, was born to life. They, born, they tied him. Go and study it. This is not some hidden stories online. Tied him, set fire under. Burnt him. The Bible you are reading at ease and all you are seeing is promises. I mean, all you, you are seeing is promises. Somebody died for translating it into your English so that you can understand and see the promises. And it's so surprising that all you are seeing is promises. You don't see the part that engages you. You don't see the part that you have to also make that sacrifice for the generation to come. A man was born to life. And watch this. When he was dying, he said, Lord, forgive these people. For they don't even know what they are doing. There are a few people that have prayed that prayer. After Jesus, he was just stealing. He prayed that prayer and said, Lord, one request as I die in pains. Raise a king in England that will permit the entire translation of the Bible. I did the New Testament. Let them permit the entire Old Testament. So that at least every tribe can have it. English particularly. And then later the king came called James. When the king arose called James, he now permitted that the entire Bible should be translated into English. That's why we now have the Old Testament coupled with the one who he already did, the, the New Testament. That was the only prayer point he had. He didn't say, Lord, kill and destroy them. Instead, raise a king. That's why the Bible was named in his name, King James Version. That's how we got King James Version. It was because of the king of England, that point, that permitted the entire translation. They named it after him. How about John Hoss? A lot of people went through things. And it's surprising that all our generation knows is the promises part where we receive. And there's nothing wrong. But how about being positioned also? Let me give us a few examples in scriptures of righteous men. And in fact, they are officers in Christ. And the many things they went through. This is the first part of this teaching. Number one in scripture is Abraham. Let's start from there. Abraham was called a friend of God. You should not expect that someone God calls his friend should go through anything. James chapter 2 and verse 23. James chapter 2 and verse 23. Zela Frataka. And the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Read the remaining part. And he was called the friend of God. If I'm your friend, oh God, why should I stay for 25 years without a child? If I'm your friend, you call me your friend. But you had to keep me for 20. Is it that you don't have what it takes to give me that baby the same day I got married? Now you will turn around and tell the entire world I'm your friend. Some of you would have gone to God face to face and tell him, Lord, I'm not your friend. Though. I unfriend you. How many people have you unfriended on Facebook? And the reason was because the person just went and said, this your story is not clear. He said, it's me you are doubting. Later you call yourself my friend. In fact, some people will even make a post with a threat attached. You comment nonsense, I unfriend you. Have you not seen things like that? Comment nonsense, I unfriend you. God called Abraham his friend. Yet, he kept his friend. One prayer point. 25 years. No, no now. Is it not the Bible? Let's talk. You, the last prayer point you came with before God. And it was not met. Look at the way you carried your face and left. And you are not even yet called a friend of God. We don't even know where you are, you are in the equation. And maybe you are the one calling yourself the friend of God. I am a friend of God. You are the one saying it. We've not heard from God yet. This one, it was God himself that announced that Abraham 
was his friend. Yet, one prayer point, he took his friend 25 years to answer. You don't know that part of the Bible. The one you know is Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham, blessings are mine. Right? I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed. Abraham's blessings are mine. Abby, that's the part you know. <laughs> Now, the part that God had to stretch one prayer point for 25 years. Abraham's sufferings. Mm -mm. I don't know that one. I don't want to know it. Whatever you did with him behind the scene, keep it behind the scene. For me, it is the one that is before my face I want to choose. So what if God decides to use your life to teach a generation the language of faith? When God placed this message in my heart, even me was finding it difficult, difficult to preach it. Believe me. At some point, I was asking first lady, what do I even tie to this message? I don't know. This thing in my, in my spirit, I don't know. What is this? Because most times you teach things like this, it looks like you are the one now that is an Old Testament guy. You don't understand new creation reality. Well, you that understand it, show us your result now. Because you are still going through what I'm teaching presently now. You are still in church, say amen. <laughs> waited for one prayer point, waited for a child. The pains of waiting. The pains of waiting. You might not understand what I'm saying because maybe you have not waited for anything that long. But maybe you should look for a couple that have been waiting for a child. I say this with due respect and love. There is even one I prayed for. The day they got married, somebody touched her and her menstrual flow stopped. I mean, she felt something left her. That was the last time she saw her menstrual flow. She came with her baby here. For 10 years, there was no menstrual flow. 10 years! The husband came across one of my video clips online and said, this man, where is he? Then they now found that I was around here and they were close by. He said, let's go and meet him. They came to meet me on my birthday, one of, I think, two years back or three years back. The woman was on, in tears. Ten years. So if there is no menstrual flow, it then means the issue of children self, that is not, that is, that is not topic. If at all, let's even pray that the menstrual flow return first before we now start the second prayer point. Some of you who are medical people know what I'm talking about. Ten years of waiting. Some of us have not even waited anything yet. I saw the pain in her face. I sat down there. I became emotional too. It was my birthday. One morning like that. I sat down. I said, Lord, I don't even know what to pray. But Lord, if this is the only birthday gift you give me, I'm fine. Visit this woman. She left with tears. Three hours after leaving me, her menstrual flow began. Yes, three hours. The next testimony was that she was now pregnant. She gave birth to a son and named him Samuel. I was saying this to say the pain that was in her face for waiting. Some of us right now, it's not because any demon is after you. You know how much you pray. You have bind all of them. And they are really in chains. Right now, it is God himself keeping you within a season. Working on you for a reason. And you know the problem with God working on you is that he does not explain to you what he's doing. So the journey has to completely be of faith. And the Bible says whatever is not done in faith is a sin. So you, all you have to do is to follow and trust a God that you can't trust. So you are just following at times with tears. But who told you tears was not part of it? Who told you? You are permitted to cry. I've told you again, but you are not permitted to give up. Count it not strange when you fall into fiery kinds of temptation and trials. Don't count it strange. Genesis 15. Let me show you what now happened to Abraham. 
there was a time Abraham went to God with a complaint. Genesis 15, 1, quickly. We might not even be able to see all of these examples today. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham. Oh, Abraham, I'm thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. You would think Abraham would say, Amen. Thank you, Lord. And Abraham said, Lord God, what is all of that into me? You know, when we read the Bible, we don't see that part. You thought Abraham just said, Oh, thank you, Lord. I covered the promises. They are for me. I step into them. Abraham said, Lord, what is this thing for me? Lord God, what will you give me? This is not the issue of I'm your shield and reward. What will you give me seeing I go childless? So Abraham, God is saying something else. Abraham is bringing another issue. All of these things, are, they don't mean anything, oh, as far as I'm concerned. What will you give me seeing I go childless? And the steward in my house, Eliezer, is, isn't Eliezer that will inherit everything? Let's read on. And Abraham said, behold, to me that has not given seed. You've given no seed. And lo, one born in my house, or no one born in my house is even an heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came again unto him, saying, This shall not be thine hair. Forget about this guy that is your servant. He won't be your hair. But he that shall come forth out of thy own bowel shall be thine hair. You will think Abraham had two more verses and we, we jump. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now. So he told Abraham to come out, look into the heaven and tell me the number of the stars. If thou art able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall your seed be i can't count them and god said that's how your seed will be and he believed the lord and he was counted to him for what chapter 16 verse 1 this guy just believed god now and god called him a righteous man chapter 16 verse 1 now sarah abraham so i bear him no children and she had an handmaid of an egyptian whose name was haggai let's read on Sarah said unto Abraham, Behold now, the Lord had restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in into thy maid, my maid, and it might be that I might obtain children by her. And Abraham did not say, The Lord spoke to me in chapter 15. <laughs> Some of you are no longer in church. You that just heard God, you people finish conversing with God in chapter 15. You even, you ended well. God called you. Kai, this is your faith. I have not seen this kind of faith. In fact, righteousness, you have received it in addition to your faith. Abraham went home full of just chapter 16. His wife brought him a suggestion. Look at what Abraham did. And Abraham did not even say, Pim. Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarah. Just like with everything you had. Next verse. At least two more verses. And Sarah, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband Abraham to be his wife. And Abraham agreed to. And he went in into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, the Bible says she now despised he landed us in trouble this was the Ishmael right the beginning of the bond woman the other religion this is where it started from after hearing God there are times you can hear God oh, you will be in church like this after hearing your faith is teared up you are like Lord Jesus I no, no more looking backward the moment you get home, Satan will say, Welcome back. So, what are you eating this night? You now check around. Truly, Indomie has finished. There is nothing left. You now be like, Ah, guy, to self. He will talk in church as though. <laughs> now, the moment you reach home, you now face the reality of destiny, the reality of life. That was the first example. The friend of God. How about Isaac? He sold in the land, kept fighting with his enemies. How about Jacob? We don't have time to examine that, but number two, Joseph. Joseph the visionary, Joseph the prime minister, Joseph the politician. 
God is calling you into any of those fields? In fact, God gave Joseph a lot of powerful dreams. Is that in your Bible? Powerful dreams, like a lot of us have them here. You would think by those dreams, ministry should just explore in one day. You would think by those strategies he received from God, business should explore in one day. You would think that some of you have done that at the beginning of the year, you retreated with the Lord and came out with 12 point agenda. Visionary plans still in your jota till now. I mean, based on those plans, nothing should make you fail. Now, when you look at those plans and look at your life and look at September, <laughs> you're like, Lord Jesus, oh, <laughs> we are here. I mean, your hand, whatever will be. You are not the first. Joseph, the dreamer. This, the problem, you, you are not about to say Joseph didn't know where he was going. You are not about to say Joseph was not strategic. You are not about to say Joseph was not visionary. Young lady, you are looking for a visionary man to marry. You can marry the man with vision, but before the vision produce. Have you not read why the Bible said, write down and make it plain upon tables. The first step actually is finding a man with vision, but the vision in itself doesn't produce immediately. The Bible said that vision can tarry. It can tarry. You are visionary, but it can tarry. It can stay for a while. And at some point, you and your vision will look like two of you didn't hear God. And many times, if you have shared with people up and down, the people will call you and say, but man of God, you told us in three years' time, this and that and that were going to fall in place. Please, where are we in the blueprint? You are like, I, even me now, the blueprint, I don't know where it is. It's part of it. It's part of it. And can I tell you, don't be ashamed of that season in your life. It happened to Joseph the dreamer. He had a dream. Genesis 37. I'm not in here still. I'm telling you, you have to just learn everything I'm saying. I told you that the first guy was the friend of God, Abby. So in case you see yourself as a friend of God and you are still going through a season, I've cleared you already. And in case you think you are a smart person, you have dreams. You are wondering why these things are still happening plus your dreams and visions. I'm showing you your brother now. Genesis 37 from verse 3. And Israel, the father of Joseph, loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. Let's read on, let's run. And when his brethren saw their father loved him, the Bible said, all of them hated him and could not, could not speak peaceably with him. So every time Joseph come, they would just, do, or just say things to make him get angry. Like some of you have friends like that. Now to add pepper to the injury, the Bible says Joseph now went and dreamt a dream. And he didn't keep his mouth shut like many of us are excited about where God is taking us. And everybody you meet, you gist them. Say amen. amen. Joseph gisted his brethren and the Bible said they hated him yet the more. And Joseph dreamed a dream. Okay, next verse. And he said unto them, here I pray you, this dream which I have dreamt. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheep stood, and then also stood upright. And behold, your sheep stood round about, and made obeisance to my sheep. In other words, they bowed to worship me. And his brethren said unto him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dream, and for his words. And he dreamt another dream. <laughs> <laughs> he dreamt again another one this time around he included his father and mother the sun the moon and the eleven star made up a sense to me and he told it to his father he didn't hide it and to his brethren and his father rebuked him he said Joseph rebuked him what is this dream that you are dreaming up and down Shall I and your mother and your brethren come in you to bow down to you? What do you mean? What is this? Bow to the earth before you. Some of you are confessing a lot of things now. And that's fine. It's just an aspect. But after confessing, get ready for the beat. And his brethren envied him. But his father observed the saying. So you have a dream. Shout, I have a dream. Shout, I'm visionary. 
I know where I'm going. That was the life of Joseph. He has shared with everybody. But do you know the moment that happened, the next experience he had is that in verse 18, a conspiracy happened against Joseph. The brothers saw him coming and the Bible said they conspired against him to slay him. They wanted to kill the guy that has a dream. Verse 24, they put him in a pit. Some of you, that's where you are now. You turn this way, there is no way. You turn that way. It looks like every door is blocked. It's only you and God. At times when you share with people, they don't even understand what you are saying. It's only you that know where the thing is touching you. Verse 28, he sold. They sold him. Went into Egypt. Chapter 39. He's in Potiphar's house. And then in verse 20 of chapter 29, Joseph the dreamer is in prison. Now, do any of, any, of, any of this thing look to you like this guy is going to fulfill his dreams? So that those of you who are going through tough times now and feeling like, are these things still possible? Are they possible? Will I ever come through this? Joseph went through that. With all his bag of strategies, bag of dreams, visions. The sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that is ahead of us number three is David the man after God's own heart I'm trying to pick the major one that had strategic relationship with the Lord and how they still went through so much I'm starting from the Old Testament I will still enter the New Testament so that you know that you are not spared you are not everybody say the sufferings of Christ say it again the sufferings of Christ Psalms 89 verse 20 God said I have found David my servant and with my holy oil have I anointed him Acts 13 and verse 22 God called David a man after my heart and the day David was anointed was the day his problems began the moment David was anointed listen the next 13 years of his life he was living in caves he was living in caves some of you think when, when power comes on you, the anointing comes on you, things will just start falling in place. Most times, I will soon show you, even Jesus himself, the day the Holy Ghost came upon him, where did he go next? Talk to me, where did he go next? Wilderness. You will think power came on him. The next thing that should happen is explosion in ministry. But it was wilderness. Joseph, I mean David, lived in caves. 1 Samuel 22 verse 1. The Bible says he even escaped. And he escaped into the cave Adullam. And he was there with his brethren. He was there for 13 years. Oil came on him at 17. He became king over Hebron at 30. 13 years later. And he was not even the entire Israel. Just Hebron. It took another 7 years of battles. To win the entirety of Israel to himself. With everything God has said, with everything he experienced in God, with God calling him the man after my heart, David was prayerful, by the way. How many of you know how many times David prayed in a day? How many times did he say? Seven times in a day, David prayed. So if you're about to say David didn't have a prayer life, you keep praying. He, he prayed seven times and three times he praised the Lord. Put all together, how many times? Nine times. Somebody was having time with the Lord in a day. Nine times. In 24 hours, he appeared before God nine times. You, how many times do you appear before God? And even in the midst of that. So I'm telling you now that the reason you're going through some, some things right now might not even be because you are prayerless. I know that is a place for prayer. That is the way you can address things in prayer. But listen carefully. It might not be because you are prayerless. It could just be part of the package. Part of the journey. The suffering is Christ. Number four, Job. This is an interesting one now.
collected bribe, never cheated anybody. There was no reason whatsoever for Job to go through what he went through. No reason. Very upright. In fact, the book of Job 1 verse 1 opened up with the credentials of Job. Can you give it to us? It opened up with the description. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was what? Now read the remaining la me part louder. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschew who has this kind of report yet even in the New Testament I mean Jesus had not died in fact a lot of theologians believe that this was even before the law there was no law to guide him after Genesis the Lord believed that the next book should have been Job so there was no law to guide him but even in the integrity of his conscience and all of that the man was perfect the man was upright the man feared god and is true evil so why will he go through tough times why will he go through trials why will he go through all of this kind of season he went through it anyway in verse 6 the bible said the sons of god appeared before god one of these days talking about angels they came before the lord and God himself now said, have you considered? Because Satan was among them. Satan too came to fellowship. So it's not strange to have him come to church. Say amen. amen. Satan was in church. And the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job? A man that fears me. A man that is perfect and upright. One that excuse evil. Have you considered him? Do you know him? And Satan said, do Job fear you for nothing? Is it not because you have blessed him? Take away the blessing and you will watch the way. And that's what Satan still believes till today. Can I tell you? For many of you right now, Satan believes the reason you are serious like this with God is because you have not gone through anything. That's why I sang that song. You have to make up your mind. Whether it is tough, there are people like that. If you see them smile, you might never know what they are going through. Meanwhile, there are those, a little thing. I mean, they are not even yet going through anything. They are sensing something. They are just sensing something. They come, their face doesn't even look like it again. Meanwhile, there are those who are in the heat of the trouble. The Bible says Satan went and afflicted Job from verse 13. Killed all his children, killed all he had, destroyed everything. And they brought the report to Job from verse 20. Job started a prayer in verse 20. After hearing he has lost everything, he arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head. 
which was a sign of sorrow and frustration and laid down upon the ground and did what? And worshipped. And worshipped. There are some of us here, if you go through something beyond where it is now, we won't see you in church again. I'm telling you, we won't see you. Like the drama here, you'll be the one going to God and saying, Lord, if you really are God on your throne, Job lost everything. He went before the Lord and worshipped. Next verse. And he said, Naked came I into this, my, I mean, came from my mother's womb. And naked shall I return Tita. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There's no trouble, no cause for alarm. We, are we going to church tomorrow again? Let's move. I made an investment and it didn't yield anything. And it is service day. You now sit in your home and cross your leg and say, Kai, I will follow online. Because if I go to church, people, people will know something is wrong for my mood. Why wouldn't they know when your life is tied to it? The man rose up immediately, lifted his hands, and worshipped, and said, Naked I came, naked will I return. And in all this, the Bible said, Job did not sin. Neither did he talk foolishly. He didn't charge God foolishly. Brother, it can get to that point, oh. It can get to that. Some of us just got born again. Please value this message. You just came. Let me prepare your mind. And this is not to scare you. But if I tell you that everything is just going to be falling in place, I'll be lying to you because you'll soon find out by experience. Ask some of our parents the things they went through and some of them remain Christians till date. If some of us here had gone through one thought of what some of our parents went through, you'd have backslidden since. I mean, since you would have backslidden. Some of us, our love for Jesus is still tied to things. I mean, it's tied to the things happening in your life. It's tied to the increase you are seeing on Facebook. Say amen. Number of followers increased. Thank you, Jesus. Now, somebody send a little seed of 15,000. Thank you. I mean, your love for God is tied to many things. If God shut down all of them and said, sit down, no more all of those things. One on one encounter. You will sit and say, I'm tired, though. This thing is bored. I've been sitting here for two hours. What you can't tell me this? Let me go online. And Jesus said, No more online. Job lost everything. Everything. The sons of God appeared again in chapter 2. And Satan came again. And you know, God so knew Job. Can God vouch like that about your life? I mean, he so knew Job. He will even tell Satan, Do you know my guy? Do whatever you want to do. This next encounter, he said, Touch his health. Is that what you want? Touch it. And I can guarantee you that he's going to keep his integrity before me. But ensure that his life is preserved. He went and did everything. Job sat down in sickness and in pains. At some point, his friend heard that Job was in trouble all his seven friends came together listen they came and sat when they saw the state of things none of them could talk for seven days have you seen that kind of trouble wait for seven days you could not talk you sat down quiet no utterance on the seventh day when they even wanted to start talking they started talking nonsense brother the man went through hell and the bible said all of this in fact, at some point, he said, if a man dies, shall he live again? Then he said, all the days of my appointed time, will I wait until my change comes? I know change is coming. So I won't talk foolishly. I know change is coming. I won't give up. I know change is coming. Job 13, 15. That was when he said, though he slay me, yet, though he slay me, Yet, will I trust him? I will keep trusting him. And that was the song I sang. Even if you slay me, or sin to delay me, I will never let go. I will never let go. Even if you slay me, there might be delay now. Sin. Guarantee you that is glory at the end of the journey. I will never let you. Don't allow the present moment keep you or put you down. Even if you slay me, 
Because Paul said, I'm seated with Christ. God will they see me when I'm seated up there? They brought Paul down from there. And <laughs> <laughs> so that when so that when you go through that season, don't, don't, don't see our guys that were kidnapped. Like, let me go through. I saw you checking yourself. Let me come to that. They were kidnapped. Then somebody will sit and say, Why will they be kidnapped if they had the Holy Ghost? Well, Paul was kidnapped too. He was kidnapped, they kidnapped him and beat him somewhere, and they left him there hoping that he was dead. Brethren had to look for where the kidnappers kept him prayed on him and he came back to life I was going to show you from the Bible so while you are quoting what you are quoting don't quote part of the scripture and leave the other one because that's what we do now we quote the one that suits us like I heard recently somebody said Jesus is the lamb but not the lion what kind of conviction is that the same Bible that says he's the lion and the lamb somebody choose the one of lamb and say no he cannot be I'm not a contradictory person please forgive me let's get back to the word of God but if I imagine that, I mean, we choose the one that suits us. Why? Let me show you a few statements Paul made so that you now know what I'm saying. Second Corinthians 11, 5. Even Paul knew himself. For I suppose that I was not a wit behind the very chiefest what? So he called himself the chiefest. Forget about Peter and the rest that came before me. When I came last, I gave myself a title among all of them, though I didn't see Jesus one on one, but see, I've crowned myself. I am the chief apostle. Forget Peter. <laughs> First Corinthians 15 and verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. By his grace, which was bestowed upon me. He said, upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than all of them. Can you imagine? I worked more than all the Peter Paul. Forget about the fact that I saw Jesus when I came last. <laughs> I came with fire in my bones. I worked more than all of them. Then he said, yet yeah, not I, but the grace of God which was with me. So I, I worked more than all of them. In fact, he said, I prayed more than all of, all of them. You, do you know the kind of things people Paul said? Let me show you. First Corinthians 14, 18. He didn't just brag about going around preaching more than all of them. He didn't say, I prayed more than all of them. I thank my God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. All of you are joking. Paul, the apostolic ministry, you see pride. That's what's happening here. <laughs> ah, the apostolic ministry, pride. Even in miracles, he said, Me, do you know kind of miracles God did for me? Special. He put his headache, <laughs> stomach pain, ulcer. No, special. Acts 1911. Do you know Paul? At some point, Paul, Paul rebuked Peter. And God wrought special miracles by my hands. My name is Paul. <laughs> he was the one that brought all the revelation, wrote one third of the New Testament. You read his writing, the way he talked audacity. And later when he talked, he was still reminded that he's still in prison. Oh, forget about that confession. <laughs> No, I don't know reading your Bible. Read your Bible. At times we even start by telling you, I am Paul, the prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm still in prison. Meaning, in fact, I'm still in chains. It's just that my hand, I cannot stop writing. Meanwhile, I know who I am. <laughs> even though I'm in chains and I'm in prison, forget, I still know who I am. They didn't change my mouth. Hallelujah. Went through so much. Brought all kinds of revelation. But you know one thing I love about Paul? That he didn't hide his cast. He just that you can choose the part you want to read and leave the other one. But he didn't hide it. In fact, I'm going to show you one now that he outlined everything. It's like he summarized his afflictions. Summarized all of them. If you read every piece, you'll find them scattered around. But there was a place he summarized all of them. He told us that there were a point he was broke. There were a point he was at. I mean, everything he went through. Let me show you. So that we we'll pay attention and learn from his afflictions. Not just the result. 2 Corinthians 11, for the sake of time, let's read from verse 22. Are they Hebrews? So am I. 
Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. If you think I'm a fool for bragging, I am. Then he said, in labor, I labored more abundantly. I walked. Now the next one, in beating. Have you been beaten before? In stripes, above measure. Meaning I can't count how many times they caught me and flogged me for preaching. In prison, I became like a constant criminal. Like a customer, but always in police. I mean, they always locked me in prison. Can you imagine? It's like a hardened criminal who will do something and he's in prison. He comes out one month later, he's going back there. In prison, more frequent. Now, in death, awful. Meaning he died many times. You, you have not even died once. <laughs> it was your Gichon that fainted three times. All through his life. I mean, you'll be preaching like this. The way I'm preaching, he will faint. And then many times we now stand. He has the largest church. He, he died recently anyway. One million members. Why would you faint? One million members. They come for youth meeting. You see like 500 youth. Just youth. They come for men gathering. You see 250,000 men meeting. Even if it's that one they give you as a men president you it's like you have the largest church in the world for <laughs> do you understand the man fainted three times i mean preaching now we will stand and declare lord the man tools of <laughs> and you don't want to faint you don't want to go through anything paul said i died many the one we know is the one they beat him till death that's the only one but Paul, he said, forget that's the only one they wrote for you. But me, I know I died many times. Out of beating and attacks. Of the Jews, five times, received I 40 stripes. Save one. Do you know what that means? I mean, I was beaten five different times and all of them were 39 stripes. And you know the way the Jewish week were? At the end of the... Um, the week, the age, is either they attach um, bottles or bones, dry bones, or hooks, so that when they beat you and take it off, it will fetch a pound of your flesh off. That was the beating Jesus received. It's called a Jewish week. Your own, even if they beat you, the koboko was not to put anything on top. They just flogged you, no man, no man, say go. He had to identify, it was the Jewish week. With either tongues or dry bones attached to the age. So that the moment they bring one, they bring it off. Your flesh is gone off. I was beaten like that five times. And each of the times it was 39 stripes. 40 except one. All for the sake of Christ. The sufferings of Christ. If all you see is that you are seated with Christ and nothing should touch you there. Well, I was there and this beating still came. Next, next, next. Thrice. Was I beaten with rod? You know rod? I don't rod. That was not Jewish week. It was rod. They used him beating him three times. Once was I stoned. They used stones on me. Three times I suffered shipwreck. The only one we know is the one they ended up in the island of Melita. In Acts. But he said that was not the only one. It was three times we were shipwrecked. The, the, the ship broke. How we survived. All for the sake of Christ. You start examining if you have gone through this much yet. Because our generation don't know this one. We only know that things should just keep going well. If it's not going well, something is wrong with your faith. A night and a day have I been in the deep. So one night when that ship broke into pieces. For 24 hours we were in the deep. We didn't know where we were swimming to. We were just, whether we were going to survive it or not, nobody knew. We were just there. In journeying, often I was always on the road, always on the road. In perils of water, rain came on me. Anything you can imagine. In perils of rain. Right now, if rain falls, people don't come to church again. 
Of course, now attendance is always empty when people were rare for. Because somebody says, Oh my let me just follow online. If I go, the church is filled, overflow, then we touch. No, 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 no. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> we love the cute Jesus. We don't love the Jesus with bruises. We don't love the Jesus that was hanged. We don't love the Jesus that was nailed. The one we love is the one that can pass through the door without being open. That's the one we like with power. The one that can show up and say, peace be upon you, breathe on them and power everywhere. That's the one we love. When we talk about the one that was beaten, he said, no, Jesus cannot be beaten. Put up the scripture. In journey in love. In perils of robbers. So armed robbers attack. Maybe you travel or something, then they now say, ah, you didn't have faith. If you had faith, you would have stood there like a sir. Well, Paul was attacked by armed robbers. And he didn't say he disappeared. They met one on one. No, there are times you find yourself. I'm sure this guy because I prayed and said, Lord, let's disappear again in the name of Jesus. I was going preach about the Philippian airline. After praying, they woke up, they were still there. Others must have disappeared in some testimonies here and there. But if God chose that you should go through it, it's still for his glory. It's still for his glory. The Bible says, Robbers, in perils of robbers, we met them, they collected everything. Some of us, our phones have been collected. In fact, some, they didn't just collect the phones. Some of you, your phone got missing in church. Has it not happened yet? Ushering department. Power of God everywhere, blah, 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 blah. Cheers are scattering. Somebody just do like this and his phone goes and somebody catch and say, thank you, Lord. I came and I collected the blessings of the Lord. And we will announce, bring back if you met a phone that is not yours. And somebody will leave thinking he left with a blessing. Can you imagine? In the house of God. Even after this kind of hot message. You know, when the sons of God appeared before the Lord, it was not just the sons of God. Satan was. In the Otherwise, if, he, if that's not the case, why? Why? Hallelujah. In perils of my own country, man. People you don't think should be against you are against you. Your parents or your, your children or your siblings or your friends. People you think should support this cause are the ones trying to pull you down by all means. People you even call friends are the ones that are trying to destroy you. They are even competing with you. Everybody wants to. And I'm like, why? What is happening? That's why I told you the suffering of Christ is not just that you didn't have food to eat. It could be people oppressing you in church and you want to talk and the Holy Ghost will say, shh, hold your mouth, hold your peace. It could be part of it. He said, me, I have mouth, so let me just talk. Let's clear up things once and for all. And the Holy Ghost will say, if you clear up things, I will step out. Allow me to clear them up in my own way. And you are like, Lord, your own way used to take long. Of my countrymen, in perils by the hidden, people that were not born again, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, I saw all kinds of things. In perils in the sea. In perils among false brethren. So we don't only have false preachers, we also have what? False brethren, false believers. They are in church, they do as if they are hearing, but they are false. Just the way you say fake prophet exposed. Have you seen things like that? There are believers who should also go online and say false believer exposed. You just saw it now. You just saw it now. I mean, you are in church, but your way of life doesn't look churchy. You are, you are a Christian, but when we examine your life, you say, Apostle, they don't just like me. I'm going through my own um, sufferings of Christ. I'm not talking about suffering because of stubbornness. I'm talking about suffering because of Jesus. False brethren. Let's read on. We're almost there. In weariness, I was exhausted. In painfulness, I was in pain. In fact, when I was reading, I think just some weeks back, my normal study, and I came across when Paul was making reference that somebody, he left somebody in one particular city that the guy was sick. Have you seen that in your Bible? Read your Bible very well. I said, Paul, you, with all the healing anointing, you left somebody, and you are even reporting that you left him sick. 
Where is all the encounters? Where is all the anointings? And he was not ashamed. In watching, often, I was always awake praying. In hunger, this one should concern somebody now. Was Paul ever hungry that he didn't have food to eat well? In hunger, and not just hunger, even pure water money was not there. In thirst, some of you even carry bottled water around. God has done you well. God has really done you well. There was a time Paul, I mean, food was not here, pure water was not here. No. And he maintained his integrity. You are carrying bottled water, God have helped you. Some of you hide the water. <laughs> Don't hide the water. Let's know how far God has brought you. In fasting, often I was fasting. Some of you don't even know the last time you fasted. In cold, in nakedness. I mean, poor in cold. No money to buy cardigan. What are you saying? In nakedness. I'm showing you the extent to which it can get. Like for many of you now are around this area. Let's finish up. Beside those things which are without, there are things I could not even write. Which can wake up on me daily. The key of the church. You need to be a pastor to know the key of the church. I'm telling you, you need to be a pastor. There are times you feel like, a, I mean, as a pastor, to off your phone. Just in case you don't know. Some days back, it was Pastor Prince from Latvia that sent me. They said, that, is this all you used to go to pastoring us? He said, is this what pastoring is? I said, welcome. That was just my test. I smiled and I said, you're welcome. She said, oh, come on. Some of you here are like that. The way you are rushing to answer the call. Nobody is stopping you. Answer. When you finally enter, you'll be like, Lord, can I just take a break and rest? And the Lord will rest from what? He that put his hand on the plug and look back, it's not worthy. So forward, you have started the journey forward ever. You used to want to always preach. You will soon preach and you'll be asking God, what next? Then he said, who is weak? Am I not weak? Who is offended? And I born not. I mean, there were times I literally was offended. I had to just keep myself, keep my cool. Otherwise, I would have busted and then scattered things. If I must need glory, I will glory of these things which concern my infirmity. I will glory in my afflictions. Not even the result yet. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, nowhere that I lie not. So everything I said now is not a lie. Then he now added one. In Damascus, something happened. The governor, you know, he used to go to Damascus to kill people. This time around, God caught him on the road. And it looks like those in Damascus will now wanted to pay back. With every trouble he has caused, that same Damascus. He said, the governor under Aretas, the king, kept the city of the Damascus with a garrison desiring or desirous to apprehend me. They wanted to catch me for being born again. For now being in Christ, I mean my shopping was to start from Damascus. Look at what happened. And through a window. Oh, you just saw Jesus on this back. And he didn't say, no way, me, window, no way. Who is entering a basket? Allow me, Shaka, Parada, Lasta. He enters, he wears the basket. Paul said, where is the basket? I'm entering. Bring the basket. Provided I, I mean, they kept the gate of the city. Soldiers everywhere wanted to apprehend. The only way you could escape from that city was through this means. So they brought a big basket and Paul entered and they covered him. Carried the man of God in the basket and dropped him. Imagine this, they, they dropped him gradually. And he was doing them bye bye. Thank you, I've escaped. How I come from here is none of your business. Just drop me. Let me be sure I escape. The Bible said, in a window, in a basket, was I led down by the wall. He didn't say, and I ran away, and I escaped. And I escaped. Don't be 
be ashamed of your present season. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't be ashamed. I know a lot of people have made you feel bad. Don't be ashamed. While you are doing everything that is needed to do, I teach you here, you know it. While you are doing everything you need to do to live your present season, as God grant grace, don't be ashamed of your present level. Share your testimonies.
And Jesus had to cry. He said, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? You would think if he still talk, he didn't talk. Until Jesus went into that tomb and came out. That's the son of God. Paul said that I might know him. And not just stop at knowing him in his power, but even in the fellowship of his suffering. Let me know that part too. As I touch on his power of resurrection, let me touch on the fellowship of his suffering. I want to experience the boat. I want to experience it. Finally, the book of Hebrews tells us, Hebrews 12 from verse 1. Maybe we'll wrap up with that. Hebrews 12, 1. We are first saying that we have come past the Bible with great cloud of witness. The Bible says, let us lay aside every weight on the sin that God easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. You have to be patient in this season. Verse 2. Looking on to Jesus. In other words, let Jesus become your model. Looking on to Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was ahead of him. That's what I'm about to guarantee you tonight. That there is a joy ahead. Say amen. There is a joy. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Endured. Endured. Despising the shame. So he went to shame. Some of you have been embarrassed. Some of you have gone through shame. Jesus went through it too. And right now he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Verse 3. He said, For consider him that endured such a great contradiction of sinners against himself. Study him. Take him into consideration. Lest you will get weary and faint. Even in your mind. If you don't know that Jesus went through this and you don't learn from his life, he said you can be tired and weary. There are times you pray against all forms of things and there is a place for that. And there are times God is even the one allowing those things happen for a reason. But in any case, I can guarantee you there is joy at the end. Some of you literally cry every night some of you have asked questions that only god has the answer that humanly speaking nobody can answer them humanly speaking i think the last thing you should think of is giving up we're going to continue this next week but i want us to pray tonight for strength and grace because whether you are not in the season now, it doesn't matter. You are going to go through it. This is not prophecy. If it is the God of Israel that is training you, if it is the God of Israel you are working with, there are going to be seasons like that. No matter your level of prophetic accuracy, you will be in a fix one day. And what to do next, you honestly don't know. You will be before a situation and it will take the intervention of God and His mercy. Some of us are there already. Some of us have gone through it already. Maybe going through it now, but at another level, grace has been sufficiently been released. Some of us don't even know what I'm talking about at all. You don't even know. You just receive the words and store them in your spirit. For such times that will come. Check our world and see how wicked it's becoming. The system of the world is attempting to buffet believers in every quarter. Every quarter. It looks like right now the most trending news in the, in the Nigeria is the body of Christ. The body of Christ, there may be politics, and even the politics just because of what that is happening now. The moment all the dust settle, the major news that will remain again is the church. You think it's easy? We are the carry a particular father of faith and insult. You think you don't see? You see them quiet, you think they are not aware. They are weary. At times it can be weary. People they are laboring for like today. I saw Bishop Beverly Elbo went for outreach just within weekend. Won 300 souls into church. I don't think I've done that yet. Within one weekend, 300 souls into church. Yet somebody will come up, insult him. If you, if you don't even respect the age, how about, I mean, if you don't respect the grace, how about respecting the age? But a generation of arrogant 
people being paid by the devil to do evangelism online and to look for gullible believers. Some of them are here. I mean, believers who don't know their left from right. So you see things like that online, you just jump on them. Some of you even go to comment. A man laboring for the kingdom has won 300 so The man that is talking against him have not won one so in two years. So the people you are laboring for are still the people insulting you on top. Like Jesus was killed by the ones he came to redeem. And then he could not even see anything. There is a season everybody must go through. The message is to prepare you. If you have gone through it already, you will, you, your spirit will resurrect. I mean, you will understand what I'm saying right now. If you have gone through it before, or if you are in the center of it now, then you will understand what I'm saying. But if you have not gone through it at all, it might look like what I'm saying now. It just tries me. But at least this is not the end of your journey. Keep coming. Keep coming. I want you to be strengthened. I want you to be empowered. I want you to make up your mind that regardless what happens, for whatever, for whatever, even with tears in your eyes, God is doing something new in my life. You might not even have the explanation. God is doing, that's all we know, something new, great in our lives. God is building something great from our lives. I believe it's for a reason. God is doing something great in our lives. He won't stop. He won't stop till we look just like Him. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till we become just like him, we will cry, but he won't stop. Till we become just like him, we might cry, but he won't stop. Till we become just like him, he won't stop. tonight pray I am going through a season it is not orchestrated by you it is over tonight the end of it has come if it is orchestrated by you I obtain grace 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 Is someone praying? I obtain grace. Just keep playing the song softly at the background. I obtain grace. I obtain grace. 
la cabara na na de sana ya ela na 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 ya ela va de na 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 va do sol a bana ela cabara ta ba cabaya are you praying 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 are you ten grace I obtain grace. I obtain grace. I obtain grace. Though I walk through the waters, He said you are with me. Though I walk through the furnace, you are with me. Leke berata ba 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 raso be lefi ada ba hai. Leke be be raso so be la kapri ada ba hai. Lembe rente mbe leke seke be re la ba hai. Victorious in the name of the Lord Jesus. I want to speak a prayer over our lives, but before then, listen. So that we'll just do it once and for all. We are behind time. You are here tonight and you are saying, Apostle, I think my own first is to get reconciled back to God. I want my sins forgiven. I want to come back home to Jesus. I want to love him genuinely, enough of playing pranks with him and my life. I want to dedicate my life. Maybe you have been born again, but you know that things have not just been the way they should be. Or you are not even sure of heaven right now. If rapture happens, you are like, I don't know what my faith is. Wherever you are, come. I want to pray with you as I speak generally of our lives. Wherever you are, come. Don't be ashamed. Come. You are saying, if rapture happens now, I'm not sure of going to heaven. Come. Or you are saying, I, I gave my life to Christ, but a lot of things happen. I need to rededicate my life to Jesus. Come. Let your sins be forgiven. God bless you, my brothers. Bless you, my brothers. Bless you. If you are waiting for someone to come before you start coming, well, there are people here now. Start coming. You are coming from the overflow. I'm waiting for you. Take that bold step. If you can hear God talking to your heart, take the step. Don't fight that voice. Don't fight that voice. Come. Don't fight that voice. Come. It is God speaking to you. If you can hear that voice telling you, step out now. It is the voice of the Lord. Respond. Respond to that voice. Come, I'm waiting for you. You are saying I'm not a bad person, but I just want my sins forgiven. And I want to be sure of heaven. I want to be rapturable. Come. There are a few more people I'm expecting. Come. I'm waiting for you because the Lord is calling on you. He's beckoning. Come. Come. Come.
establish and raise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Please, you follow this way. There is a counselor standing there with a black hand. You just follow her. We are going to go with you to attend to you. God bless 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 you. Hallelujah. All right, can you just lift your hands? I want to speak about lives and we say the grace. Have you been blessed tonight? Next week, I'm going to start a discussion from the seventh example, which is you. You are the seventh example I'm using next week. Say amen. amen. I've given you six from scripture. You are the seventh. So you don't want to miss that one. We are going to discuss you. But I pray by the God of heaven and the grace that backs this commission in the name that is above all name. If you are in a season falsely orchestrated by demonic forces, by powers of darkness, by every form of orchestration of darkness that is not of God, to bring you confusion, to bring you discouragement, to bring you frustration. I stand by that grace, the apostolic and prophetic grace over this commission. I decree that that season be rolled away now. Oh, I hope you believe it. Let that season be rolled away now. It might be a season of financial problems and lack. Let that season be rolled away now. It might be season of repeated troubles, repeated um, setbacks. Let it be rolled away now. It might be season of conspiracies, attacks from people that should be a blessing to you. Let that season be rolled away now. It might be an attack against your health, against your family. Let it be rolled away now. Amen. By the power of redemption, I decree and declare you are free. Amen. And I decree and declare that you step into a new season now. Amen. A season of grace and glory. Amen. A season of health and abundance. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Let confusion be far from you. Amen. Let oppressions be far from you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Business is not working. Jobs are not coming. And it's not orchestrated by God. Let that season end right now. Amen. Let that season end right now. Amen. And I decree and declare. That let there be supernatural interventions in your life. Amen. Interventions that will bring about miracle jobs. Amen. That will bring about explosion in that business. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And whatever is planted in your system, your body that is not of God, or around your life that is not of God, I decree and declare, it is over right now. It is over right now. It is over right now. You step out of this place made whole completely in the name of the Lord Jesus. And if there is a season God has allowed to happen, like he said in the case of John, I mean Lazarus, he said this sickness is not unto death. So he permitted certain things to happen for a reason. I decree that's the case for you. May God grant you grace to go through it and come out safe. May God grant you the strength to go through it and come out safe. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And I decree over that situation. It will not put you down. It will not discourage you and put you off. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Like he said in the case of Lazarus, I decree that that situation, that affliction, that sickness is not unto death. In the name of the Lord Jesus, but that the glory of the Lord be revealed in and through your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you are coming out of that season and your life will become a testament of God's faithfulness. People will study your life to study the faithfulness of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. As you leave here, I declare and decree that your lives are preserved. Amen. Oppressions are over. Amen. I decree and declare that you are stepping into new realms of favor. Amen. As you step out tomorrow, what you could not do for yourself, favor will make it happen. Amen. Grace will make it happen. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The Lord is asking me to pray a particular prayer. There are things you are going through. It's not just you, it's a family thing. And that one you have prayed and prayed and prayed. It is obvious this is the hand of the enemy. I decree in the name of Jesus, the end of that family challenge has come now. The end of that family circle has come now. 
the end of that family setback has come now in the name of the Lord Jesus you are coming back on Sunday with a testimony oh I hear this in my spirit something big is happening to you something great is about to happen to you something big will happen to you this week in the name of the Lord Jesus amen and amen and I decree that your lives are preserved oh listen again no man born of a woman can take your life not accident not a plane crash a decree and declare not even wicked men in the midst of it all your lives are preserved he told Job, he said, ensure that nothing happens to his life. Told the, the, the devil, rather, nothing happened to his life. Anything can be affected, but let their lives be preserved. I decree that your life is preserved. Your life is preserved. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lift your hands and bless the name of the Lord inside, outside. Lift your hands, give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks, oh, we thank you to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's living. Jesus, the Son.
Because somebody must share one testimony before the day is over. Believe it. Believe it. My cry, my cry has been for you. That everybody's heart desire, something should just shift. This year cannot end. I know we've had a lot of testimonies here and there. But I still believe that the best is even yet to happen. I believe it. So begin to tell people around October from the miracle service are going to be weeks of testimonies, strategic teachings, and then strategic prayers and declarations that will shift things in our lives. Amen. 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 All right, and then finally, we're having workers retreat on Saturday, the 16th of October. I mean, September, this, this month now. And this is just this Saturday, right? I've been announcing it since last month so that every worker is around. It's going to be a retreat from 7 a.m. maybe till 12 1. Let's just have a lot of time to pray, to worship, and to admonish ourselves in the word of God. Amen. Amen. So you are head of department, talk to everybody in your department, you miss that meeting, I will look for you personally. And don't say, okay, I want the boss to look for me. They're looking for you, it's not for impartation. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, so plan to be part of it. Amen. Are you blessed tonight? I told us number seven example is who? Is you. I'm starting with you on Sunday, so you don't want to miss it, invite someone to church. And I know it's going to be an amazing time. The Lord bless you again. And cause His face to shine on you. And be gracious unto you. In Jesus.